Welcome, everybody. My name is Jared, and I'll be hosting today's Lunch and Learn. So if you have any questions or any things you'd like to discuss from a decision standpoint, leave a message in the chat or in the QA section, and we'll get to it, and I'll demonstrate it or explain the concept if need be. We have a couple of cool things coming up. We have some new videos posted on our decision support channel. So go ahead and navigate to that YouTube where we post weekly content. You also get access to the new Decision Solutions Marketplace where you can see all the different applications that our solutions team builds to kind of illustrate how the product can be used. And then what we do is we also have some events coming up. Decision.com forward slash, I think events is the location. And we have um, our submerged deep dive. So not next week, but the following week in Virginia Beach, Virginia. If you are curious to see what each and every one of the training team or other people you work with that decisions look like and want to connect with them, many of us will be there. So go ahead and click that register button. Just smash that thing right there and go ahead and fill out your first name, last name, and work email. And then we'll definitely see you at the Decisions World headquarters. It's going to be a fun event. We love meeting new people and getting to know how you use decisions. All right, anyone have any questions? If not, I know we did have one question and one priest that came in that just someone asked about a training and curious what our program is like. And if you're curious about that, let's go back to our decisions.com where you can see all of the different trainings that we offer there. So we offer a, an in-person training, a three-day submerge, which we already talked about. Um, we also offer a flexible online asynchronous portion. So this allows users to be able to enroll. You go through a self-paced course and you go through a, a self-paced um, time for um, building a project, building purchase requests. And then uh, we also will teach you different concepts on how to build different applications and decisions through our dev course. So to start that journey, you click over here. Um, we also have some other uh, four kind of total courses that we have here. One's product training, which is the basic level. Um, that's where you kind of get access to the um, first initial start of training. And then we have some default learning paths called the Decisions UI application, which is focuses on end-to-end -end application creation and decisions with reporting, dashboards, and landing pages. We also have the decisions rule engine, which allows you just to focus on the rules engine portion. If you don't, if you're not going to have a lot of UI, um, then you'll just focus on rules and flows and auditing those rules and what ran. And then fourth, we also have a new decisions process mining training course that will teach you how to use the decisions process mining application. You can go ahead and register. There's no prerequisite to this course. You can just go ahead and register for it and then start your learning journey today. Let's see. Does anyone have any time to walk me through a flow my company created after this? Um, all depends, um, Al um, Alex. Um, I know we can't do it here because um, we can't have our customers share screen because we post these videos to YouTube. And so for your data and compliance sake, uh, we don't want to share your screen for that. Um, those types of queries are best serviced in the support team. So if you want to um, email support at decisions.com and open a support ticket. They can get on a call with you and review that flow with you if you're, if it's a, a company production flow that you want uh, reviewed. So that's where you'd find that information there. Yep, no worries. Welcome, Peter. Do you have any questions? If you have any questions, Peter, feel free to write them in the Q&A or in the chat or raise your hand and I can send you off um, to come off mute and then you can explain to me your question.
Ah, great question. Will there be a lunch and learn on Monday? No, there will not be. Uh, we will be celebrating Labor Day here at Decision. So the U.S. team will be on holiday for that day. So there will be no uh, lunch and learn on that Monday. We will be resuming the lunch and learns on Tuesday through uh, you know Thursday. And then after that, we'll be resuming the normal schedule. So, good question. How long have I been at Decisions? I've been at Decisions for a long time. Um, I've just passed my five-year mark, so I was here at Decisions um, when it was just in its kind of starting up phase, which is a pretty cool experience, and it's cool to see where it's at now. So, yep, so a good long while. So I meant using the tool. Oh, same, same time frame. Started back in 2019. Still been using the tool, building in it um, for that long. Um, when I started, it was version six was the new version, and version five was the uh, was the uh, general, uh, the GA version. So um, that's where we were at. But yep, five years I've been utilizing the tool. Are there plans to add a little more coding aspects and go low code versus no code? Um, uh, I, well, that's where we're kind of at in the decisions world is we are a low code to no code application. Um, we do allow um, in our documentation site, we do allow people to have access to our X, um, what is it? S XDK, SDK, our software development kit that is located here on our doc site. And that allows you how to add to the product, adding more flows and rule steps or custom data sources. Um, controlling the product, let's say you want to create a new flow behavior or a different type of text merge or folder behavior, you can do that as well. Um, you can also set up your own security and permissions, access the ORM later. There's kind of a bunch of things you can do in the SDK. So we try to do um, something like that. And so that's kind of where we go in the low code fashion is you can uh, write your own um, steps inside of decisions. So yeah, I wouldn't say specifically to low code, but we try to do as much as we can in both avenues. Um, we still are um, kind of a low to no code um, application. So yeah, I don't know if that answered that question, but uh, we are currently low and no code due to the SDK options that you have on the screen right here. <laughs> Any plans to change the name from decisions? No, we've actually, there's been a lot of, uh, you know, people who have talked about that, um, how uh, it's very hard to find like decisions developers because decisions is just a hard name to find. And when you go to YouTube and look for decisions, you get like TED talks on how to make choices and doing risk analysis and things like that, which is not what we are. Um, typically uh, a good way to find, if you're looking to find people who are in this kind of low to no code space via LinkedIn, you can look up BPM developer or business process automation, BPA. Um, and that usually gets your kind of, uh, um, gets better hits on people who kind of do what we do internally. But um, there are no uh, current plans to change the name from decisions. It's already kind of cemented in a, a lot of our organizations across the globe. And I think um, I can talk with uh, some of my own uh, other coworkers. I think we have a, um, there used to be a uh, 
Correct. Yeah. B BPM developer or BPA business process automation, like looking up for those keywords. I, we used to have something available online. Let me see if I can find that for you. Uh, basically what that did is it showed kind of like different people um, who have uh, development experience that maybe you could reach out to um, development experience specifically with decisions. And um, some of those people may be op on LinkedIn, open to work or open to network with. And that's how we kind of had like uh, that sheet. Let me see if I can find that if we even still have that. Cause I know we had like a dashboard that we used to send or, or is it not a dashboard? I'm sorry. It was like a document. But I'll look around for that. And if I find something, Alexander, I will send that to you. If we still have it. I don't know if we still have it. Guys, remember, remember the day. Yep, give me one second. Shoot that. Oh, right. Awesome. Advanced flows. Yeah, absolutely. That's going to be a fun one. Unfortunately, um, the sad part, nothing wrong with version nine. I've just, I've been working in version eight for so long. So it's going to be a lot of stuff I created. Um, it's in version nine now. So I'm a little sad, but that's okay. But yes, I will build some more stuff. Let's see. Let me make sure that um, yeah, we're fine. Oh, let's see. Let's go to my folder view. And what else are you running? I gotta let me oh I have that let me close this I gotta my browser is just slow um let's go to folder um yeah so one of the things that I built um this was it's only relevant really in version 8 but I think it, it deals with a lot of cool things that are fun to talk about um in the uh, project folder scaffolding um version 8 project this is not necessarily or not necessarily this is not needed in version 9 because we have project hub uh but what I did is it was this project that would allow us to generate a, a new like kind of root folder scaffolding into the um, uh, into the folder tree for a project, and it would attach it to a specific um, what do you call it? Uh, a statue to a project already. I think where's the where's kind of a way I can show this? I think I have a better version eight instance that I can um and demonstrate this, and it's just a lot better. Um, one of the things we have, okay, perfect, let's do this. I like this. So in our register server, this is a server we use here internally. We have this project folder scaffolding. And what it does, it's the exact same flow I was showing you earlier, but in version eight, it allows me to generate all of the project views that I need in a relatively quick fashion. It's because I'm utilizing um, an integration internal services um, and a couple of the folder service, I think it's like create folder service is what I'm using here to create uh, different um, um, objects and elements um, here that I can do. So it's pretty helpful and it's really cool um, just to see what it looks like. If I want to um, create a folder and attach it to a project, I can utilize um, this and create it with a project name and then it attaches all of the folders that I create into that project, and then it will refresh your folder tree and navigate you to that newly created folder. So to see it in action, let's say I'm creating a new project. Let's say I run this flow here, and I say this is uh, cool stuff for Alex, right? So that's going to be the project name. It's going to be called Cool Stuff for Alex, and then I can choose which of how many folders I want to create. I can say I just want the flows. I can say I just want the reports. I can say I want all of them, or I can say I want none of them, and I want to go back to selecting which ones I want. So let me spell your name correctly because obviously I can't spell. And so let's say I know I'm going to create a project that has flows, rules, um, I will have reports, and let's say I will need uh, you know data types and a dashboard. Um, so yeah, and essentially we'll just, yeah, we'll just select that stuff. 
So when I click generate folders, what's going to happen is it generates all that data and then boom, cool stuff for Alex gets automatically generated inside of decisions and it navigated me directly to that folder. And you can see here the cool stuff for Alex project, this part got um, facilitated and created um, inside of that this, um, um, this environment right here. And then I can easily delete it by just managing and deleting it if I don't need it anymore. But that's some fun stuff that you can create um, with um, the folder scaffolding project in version eight. Um, in version nine, not really that needed because you already have um, Project Hub. So that's why I didn't demonstrate it on here because it's no longer um, needed at the moment. Um, some other cool things that we can do um, in decisions is, um, not a lot of people know this, but uh, this is our purchase request project. If you want kind of an insight on what it looks like when it's completely done, um, it will look somewhat like this. Um, but the cool thing about um, this is, is that on the dashboard perspective, I think it's located here if I can find it. If it loads, that would be a nice thing to, for it to load. I don't think I have too many. Wait, wait, there's someone else here. Is this, uh, let's let me remove this. I gotta move this window. I gotta clean up my, my laptop. Um, so here's the dashboard that we create for that. But one of the things you can do here is let's go inside of the actual um, uh, tile flow. Because there's a couple of cool things you can do with tiles that I don't think we talk about a lot from. So if I go to my purchase request page, you'll have the simple tile right here. And you may be familiar with the simple tile. It just kind of displays data. You can add CSS to it to make it nice and spiffy. You can also um, set up some of the part types, Chromeless, high title bar, small title, you know, it's all this kind of configuration stuff. But the stuff that I really want to show that I think is super impactful is on this create tile data step, we also have tile actions, right? So these tile actions could give you the ability to run a specific type of action whenever a user clicks on it. So for example, I can have someone uh, navigate to a certain part of decisions, right? And you can go to a different part of decisions by merely left-clicking this dashboard. So let me go ahead, let's add in the folder ID. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and add another uh, local, ins a local, you know, navigate to my local again so I can navigate to that part. Um, let's say I wanna navigate to this part, um, this uh, list view and to this folder, folder scaffolding on a left-click. So what I can do here is I can grab the folder ID up top here, copy that, or you can right click, go to more and grab that I designer folder ID. You do that that way too. Works all the same. And then what I can do is I can paste that folder ID. You can get this dynamically if you want. I'm merely just kind of showing what the thing does. And then you can also select the page name. Now, what are the page names? Uh, the page names are the things that are located all the way up to the top. Where is my annotate? I love this annotate. It is located up on the top right here. Ooh, that color's horrible. It's way too dark. Go back, go back. We want, we'll do yellow because it's easy to contrast that there. Clear drawings. Um, over here, oh, I don't think yellow is that good either. Let's try red. We'll get it, guys. Yeah, that's better. So all these are pages, right? A, a dashboard is essentially just a folder with a page. So what I can do with this kind of flow is I can tell it, um, or that tile action, is I can say, go to this folder, which is the ID that's found up here, and, or, or and, I need to tell it which page on this folder do I want to view. So let's say I want to go to unit test results. That's the page I want to go to because we all know what the list view looks like because we're looking at it right now. Um, nothing fancy, nothing cool. But let's say I want to go to the unit test results. So what do I do there? Um, all you have to do is you can set this to a constant or you can pass it in dynamically and say unit test results. Just make sure you spell it correctly because this is case sensitive. Uh, if it's not spelled the correct way, then it won't navigate you to that part of the tool. So let's go ahead and save this and let's see if this works. If I go back here and I click on this thing, boom, look at that. It navigated me to the folder scaffolding version 2.0 and then I'm in the unit test results and it navigated me to that view based on the click. Now you'll notice, right, there's no really hover effect so it's kind of misleading. Um, what we usually do here internally is we will add like hover effects. So if you have tiles that you want people to click on to like go to another report or to go to another location, you can add um, CSS a hover effect to kind of um, indicate to the end user that, hey, this is clickable. This isn't just a invisible action that, that uh, just, just exists. So that's one thing that uh, we can do there. And uh, I don't see a lot of people use um, that feature because I don't think we talk too much about it, but it's a pretty cool one um, that you can utilize. 
Um, navigate portal um, allows you to do some cool, st or we were talking about one, navigates you to a location within the decision system. URL allows you to navigate um, somewhere outside of the decision system if you want someone to go somewhere else. So I can set this up to a constant. HTTPS colon whack whack will go decisions.com, right? And I'll actually do an full um, forward slash training because who doesn't want to get trained? The more training, the better. Now we're going to save this. And then now if I go back to this dashboard, I click on here, boom, I go to the training website by merely clicking on that tile. So kind of like your imagination is, uh, you know, is your, kind of like your imagination uh, with what you want to do with that tile um, will clue you in on all of the different cool things that you can do. Let's see. Da, 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 da. I'm going to go back and remove that page. And I'm going to set the tile action type just to nothing. So that's tile action types experiment. Some of them are super fun, super cool, definitely worthwhile to utilize if it's relevant for your project. Another thing that you can do is, and we actually do this with our projects, um, with our um, kind of training section. Oh, I'm, I'm gonna, here's what I'm gonna show you. Um, you can still do this in version nine, it's just a little harder. But one of the things that I loved that I could do is, where is, uh, oh, yeah, let's go back to the register. I'm going to do it off screen one second. Get logged in. Uh, we shall, let me just create a new project. Uh, don't worry, I'll share my screen in just a bit. Create, that's going to be a, um, oh, what was it? Darn it, it's leaving me. Oh, oh, there we go. Uh, show more stuff is what I'm going to call this thing. Show more stuff. Perfect. And then I shall create a subfolder. I'm doing this off screen. Don't worry. I'm coming back. I will come back. Lows. Um, another thing that's cool is if I move this now to the screen that you all can see, is I'm going to be here into my show more stuff. And let's say I need to create, you know, different designer elements or flows or rules or things like that. I'm going to create a flow that says flow to create create more flows, right? And what we have here is if you go all the way down to um, integration, go all the way down to internal services, go all the way down to configuration storage, there is a an ability, once it opens, where you can use, you have steps to create your own um, flows. So I can say create flow, give it a folder ID, give it a name. So what, so what I can do for funsies, Let's go all the way up for fun, or for each. That's funny. I was going to look for for fun instead of for each. So what I can do is let's say I need to create a lot of these really quickly based on a template, based on whatever. What I can do is I can say, hey, let's create a flow. We're going to set this to a constant. And I'm going to grab, I can grab the folder ID up here. Or what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my flows folder right here get the folder ID, copy it, go to the flow that creates more flows. And just for the sake of the system, I don't want to just kind of blow it up with a ton of different, um, let's see, oh, not for each. I need a for loop, for loop, for loop, for loop, for loop. That's all I wanted, for loop. Yep, next, done over here. And we'll just say 15, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create 15 flows. And so I can use a merge plain text to kind of custom craft this message. So I can say this is flow and then give it a number. So I should have a total of 15 flows. And so now when I run this, boom, 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 cool stuff. And then now if I close and save this and I go back to my flows folder, I have automag automatically generated 15 flows, right? So it's a lot of really cool stuff that you can do with the configuration storage um, section if you're in version eight, it's uh, very fun. If you're looking for it in version nine, it is hidden, you cannot um, access it. Um, there is a different way that you would have to uh, uh, do to create uh, flows from a template. Uh, I forgot, I don't know off the top of my head what that new way is, but you can definitely do that in version nine, it's just you can't utilize, unfortunately, the configuration um, storage capacity um, there. So that's some of the cool things there uh, with the um, you know with the process for it. Let's see what's an example testing that I can show. 
Uh, let's see. Global resources. Nope, nothing fun. Oh, um, I built this medical project a while back. Um, this medical project um, allows you to see different um, different hospitals, different patients within each hospital, and different um, staff in each of the hospitals. And what happens here is I show all the list of hospitals, and then I did a show tree to show the case entities, which is kind of the, the patients. So you can see all of the different patients. If I go inside of a patient, I can see the information for that patient. If I go inside of a hospital, Notice that I have a default dashboard that shows me the hospital name, who the head doctor is, when it was founded by, and then also the different patients filtered by a, um, um, a parent and child reporting that I can say, hey, let's see all of the different patients assigned to a different um, you know, medical doctor or registered nurse. And so I can see all of that information um, there um, on the specific individuals that we see. So. On the main one over here, um, this report I was working on, essentially what it is, it's supposed to be a report that just shows you all, all time data of all the different hospitals. I didn't really finish it yet, but essentially what we're utilizing here is we're combining two types of data structures. How did you get a reactive dashboard? Yeah, I can definitely show you that. Um, what this does is we're utilizing a is we're utilizing a parent and filter uh, change reporting source. So to take, to take a peek underneath the hood, let's go to the reports. So we have a medical staff report that is filtered by the current folder. Basically, all of the entities, the case entities that are stored inside of it, all of the patients, their case entities, and then all of the nurses and medical staff, they're also, they are entities, they're just not case entities because they're just the actors on the process. And so now what we did here is we said, hey, since we're storing um, all the patients within a given folder, I can create a patient report that has a filter on it that says, hey, we're going to get the medical staff ID, which means that we're going to get the ID of, let's say, a nurse or a doctor. And then we're going to have this filter take it in and filter this report by the medical staff ID. And so when you do that, that's what gives you that ability to click on another a row and kind of change it um, in our in the process. And so all the data will only show what's reflective for that given um, uh, for that given nurse or for that given um, employee or uh, medical staff staffer. Um, we also do have, let me see if I can find this one. in our in one of our projects, uh, or another example of a great reactive dashboard is if you ever have done the training sections, inside this, all this is is a dashboard, right? That has a, a panel, a page on the right that shows you the directions and then different actions that allow you to test the information or to actually edit and go inside another flow to do the work of that flow, right? And that's all that is. How that report is uh, structured is it has some calculated columns. Also, I can show you that with the, with the, with the report. I think it's called like inline run flow. Was it run in line, inline? I think it's this one. Let's see, test. Yep, it's this one. Um, you always wanna be careful. So there's a, so flow in line field you never wanna use. And the reason why is it because it runs a flow for every record in your report. This may seem benign if you're only dealing with 10 records, but if you have 10 million records or even a million records or even 100,000 records, your performance on your dashboard is going to be super slow. And if you have multiple users looking at that dashboard, it's uh, super slow. So never use a flow in line field um, because you're, it's just going to really throttle your project to the point where it's not scalable. The run flow in line field, however, just gives you an action that says, hey, if you click on this specific button, it will run a flow. And so what we utilize that for inside of the training exercises is we have it actually say, okay, when you click on this button, we will navigate you to that exercise that you have here. It's just a flow that's stored in another folder. And if you craft the URL to say, let's go inside of that flow designer, you can then navigate a user to that specific flow. And so both of these actions, this edit test, 
edit and test, utilize that run flow inline field. And that one, you're not gonna get a performance hit because it doesn't run the flow. It just merely gives users an action to trigger on it. Now, this could be something like a display image, display uh, company um, employee profile, right? All that stuff um, can be done there. So it's very much leveraging um, the different um, calculated column fields and also the storage methods of the parent and child filtering. Um, this is a kind of a great, uh, if you want to learn more about that, in decisions training, in our uh, rules engine uh, project, we actually, a rules engine path, we actually have a project that teaches you how to create reactive dashboards so that it goes through, it turns into something, and you can do uh, many different things um, inside of it. So there's just a lot of fun things um, that you can do with dashboards. Um, pushing data to controls with a tile action, filtering out with parent-child reporting, uh, and uh, utilizing the run flow in light field. So that's how we got that into a, a uh, an interesting, a fun location. All right, so that's that project. Let's see, what other stuff that I built? Let me see if I have that old, uh, oh, oh, you'll like this, Alex. So if you go to um, youtube.com, we do have the stuff on the support channel, but there is this old website, not old website, old channel, uh, let's see, where I used to uh, kind of make content. Um, and, and a lot of it, this is very old, but there's one that I think if you're curious to see what you can do in decisions, is we have this um, generic document creator where, um, like I said, this is in version seven, so it is very old, um, but this can give you insight on what decisions can do. And essentially what we have here is I have this kind of document that depending on the addition of rows or data inside of it, it will go ahead and pre-populate um, that PDF and kind of build it out for you. So it's a kind of a pretty cool thing, as you can see, as the video is progressing, um, it will add certain values to the options granted, outstanding, net value, change in value, all that stuff, right? And if I add the data, right? And once I add the data, oh, there's a button on it that um, I have it set to uh, refresh on and click. It's not an automatic refresh. Um, but what this does is as soon as I click on it, it will store um, that particular data. And let me just kind of fast forward this so we can kind of see the, the cool part. And as you can see here, right, it will populate that PDF. Like here's the data you want to have here. And then if I click refresh, it will automatically put those line items in there, talk about the plan, talk about the date of grant, and then also sum up the total long-term and the total short-term. So that's kind of stuff you can do in decisions. You can have this do it automatically. Um, I just had to trigger a trigger by um, a refresh just to see that option, but it can be um, automatic. So this is a cool one. I'll drop this. Um, like I said, it, this is an old uh, channel I used to make content for a while back, but due to just you know all the stuff that I have to do, I don't post as much as I used to. Um, so here's the channel if you're curious about it, and then also here's that particular video if you're if you want to see more of how that project was created. A lot of the steps that I use in this video are still steps you can utilize um, today. I think the only thing that may be broken is this Google Drive link that probably will, oh no it does never mind. So if you want to actually have access to uh, this this uh, this project, there's a Google Drive link in the uh, view here where you can download that project, mess around with it, see the HTML that I've generated, and then you can just um, you know utilize it there. So it's super helpful, um, gives you kind of a good uh, summary on what um, decisions can do, um, and kind of show uh, the different other aspects that we have inside of decisions. So. And if you really like it, you got to let me know. Maybe I might bring this channel back. I mean, probably not uh, just, just due to how busy I am. But there's also a uh, – I can build a calculator in decisions. Don't you like ads? There we go. Um, you can build a calculator in decisions, uh, which is the one that I built. I'm just going to show you the end result, right? Probably not stuff that you would actually utilize in, in a um, – uh, you know, parts of the process, but uh, – um, the, the video is segmented, so you can easily see, like, hey, we're adding additional text or additional things, um, and then all the different active form flows that I've utilized to kind of process it. So let's let's see it actually run. So there you go. So this is, like, the finished product. Or if I want to do, uh, you know, 2 plus 3 divided by 89, right, you'll get 
that amount and it displays on a screen right there. Um, it's pretty fun stuff. Um, th this video is long, so you probably would just want to, you know, skim through it. But you know, there's a lot of cool stuff here um, that may uh, give you insight on the stuff that you can do inside of decisions. And feel free to like, comment, subscribe if there's a video you like on it. You didn't see the calculator coming. Yeah, I, it's like I had that idea because in like almost every type of kind of new application, that's like one of the first things you build. I went, when I went to college for like Java coding uh, or coding in um it wasn't JavaScript. It was a uh, I think it was just Java. That was like the first one of the first things we built. Is like, hey, how do you build a calculator? And did basic arithmetic functions. And so I just thought, hey, that would probably be a cool thing. Teach people active form flows ways to use the text box multi-line as a screen that's that's disabled, um, seeing the event buttons and organizing the form layout, right? There's a lot of cool little things from uh, that uh, um, uh, that video that people can learn from. Like I said, it is in version seven, so it is old, but a lot of the features that I demonstrate are still applicable to version eight and version nine. Um, it's just outdated. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. Yep, and that's kind of why I've really liked decisions all the years ago. Uh, that's okay. I don't know how to spell that word either. <laughs> so <laughs> works out. Um, and that's kind of how I like for my own view, right? Is like how that's how I saw decisions when I started learning it five years ago. Is I saw is I always wanted to be a developer. And um, I didn't, you know, but I didn't have a lot of like the traditional background of like, I've coded in these three languages. I know this, I know what a trunk is. I know what a, you know, a branch is. I know the software development life cycle. I didn't know any of that stuff. But um, when I got exposed to decisions, it's very much like what I like to call like a graph. Like this is just kind of my own personal, like if you want Jared's thoughts on it. I kind of consider decisions as like a graphical coding language, right? Um, because a lot of it, you still need to know some coding elements like branches and things like that. And the software to a lights life cycle that we still utilize for our repository. And to me, what it is, is it's more like, Hey, it's a new type of coding language. So if you don't want to code in like actual syntax, you know, and, you know, uh, and do that, well, then decisions is a nice, cool graphical coding language where it's like, you just drag over steps, you create it and then boom, it runs. Um, and you can send in data and do. Uh, all, a lot of different stuff with it. So, yep, that's how that's how I see it from my own personal uh, view. Exactly. Yeah. So it's kind of like a whole. Yeah, it's like a whole like suite of like you got a little bit of everything. It's like it's almost like if uh, like what is it like web development database? Uh, was it uh, database experts and software developers had a child? That's it's called decisions because you can do those three aspects and knowing those three aspects are super, super helpful. Yep, absolutely. Also the forms too. Any other questions, things you guys would like to see? That's all your questions? All right, cool. Well, then let's go ahead and wrap it up. I think that's uh, some, uh, some great stuff to put there. Yeah, my pleasure. And thank you guys for attending, Alex, Jeremy, and Peter. Um, tomorrow, we won't have a lunch and learn because that's Friday. And then we won't have a lunch and learn on Monday due to Labor Day. So we'll see you guys on Tuesday. Uh, we'll be sending out who's going to be running on Tuesday. It'll be one of one of us three, either me, Jeremy, or Robert. So you'll see our familiar faces there a lot. So um, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you guys next time.